Hello, uh, my name is Timothy Trespass, and I am what has been termed a targeted individual. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, a targeted individual is someone who has been selected by whatever means for illegal, extrajudicial, secret human experimentation. In our case, it's experimentation into mind control, uh, chemtrails slash more gallons, uh, nanotechnology and um, counterintelligence program to basically make people crazy and turn them into robots, I guess, uh, mind control slaves. Um, it, it, the, the amount uh, and number of, of things that this experimentation is based on to me seems uh, very large and to list them all would be difficult, but uh, the reason I'm making this video is I want to talk to you about about uh, truth, reporting, disbelief, debunkers, and the news. Now, I was thinking about this. When we watch the news on television, um, we watch the things they tell us, and they tell us one bad thing after another bad thing, and we go, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, this all happened. And some of it is verifiable because you saw, you know, the big accident on whatever street and it's on the news or so-and-so got shot over in whatever town and, and you know about it and you saw it on the news or, you know, the garbage guys are on strike and your brother-in-law is a garbage man. So some things you know are true on the news. But what, let me ask you this, what proof does the news offer you? They don't really offer you any proof. You just assume that because they claim their stories are true and that they can prove it, I mean, they don't even claim that. They just say, they don't even tell you their stories are true. They just say, we're the news. All the news that's fit to print and we're getting the story first and here's the scoop. Um, they don't really offer you any proof. Now, I imagine some of the things they say uh, can be legally... Um, you know, they can have legal consequences, um, and so they're very careful about that. They have lawyers, of course, on staff, and everything they say is worded appropriately to make sure that it has the impact that it's supposed to have. But why is it that we believe what the news reporters say? I mean, we know that there's no truth in advertising. The laws that were in effect for truth in advertising uh, were repealed or were let let to expire. So we know that there's no truth in advertising anymore. They can say anything they want. They can lie in any way they want and and we don't have to, you know, we don't have to know. Um So I guess it is that we just assume because uh there used to be some kind of law that said the news had to be true? I, I don't know. I mean, I know reporters, they get... Anyway, not being a, uh, a reporter myself and not knowing the legal uh, requirements that they have to fulfill in order to publish a story or have it on the news, I ask you, why is it that we believe the news is true? I'm sure some of you out there know more than I do about why that is, but uh, basically they tell us a story, they show us a few pictures, they tell us it's true, and we believe it. And uh, so why is it so hard for people to believe the story that I tell? Um, well, the story that I tell is pretty radical. It's pretty unheard of. It involves technology that most people don't know exists. Of course, most people haven't done research into this kind of technology. I never did research into this kind of technology until they started using it on me and I tried to figure out what it is that was being done. When I did that, I began to learn that this kind of technology, this quote-unquote non-lethal technology exists and is being tested. Um, I just find it well, I find it frustrating to see the level of programming that most people have accepted as their reality. Uh, there are many times when I...
confront people with my story of my experience and uh, try to explain to them what I went through and how it made me feel and what was done and the possibilities of why and the information I've gathered about how many other people around the world that this is happening to and the effect it's having on us uh, as individuals and the population as a whole and um, I get responses that are they befuddled me at first for a while these people would get angry violently angry violently angry that I had undergone this experience and that I was telling them that these things were real um, and the only reason I could come up with well I came up with a few that maybe you know I don't know maybe that it was they, they couldn't help and so they didn't know how to help so they were frustrated but no I think it, what it is 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 that the programming that we receive from the day we're born until now you know everything we watch on television uh, a lot of the stuff we see in advertising and what our friends believe is true and our peers and and you know what's purported to be the status quo of reality may not be what it really is and um you know we know from from um Freedom of Information Act documents that have been revealed uh, from the earlier years in the 40s and 50s and 60s and early 70s even that the government has engaged in this type of, of human experimentation on unsuspecting populace uh, so why should we believe that MK Ultra like programs went away when Congress said please don't do it anymore they simply said yeah sure and they sold more drugs from South America or opium from wherever and got their money you know by controlling the population with drugs they got their money for black operations that Congress didn't have to approve or disapprove and didn't know about and and this kind of research goes on all the time and if you look at the big picture of what's really going on in the world if you start to look you know I know most people they don't have the time to dedicate to you know 24 7 researching the dirty deeds uh, go down deep into the rabbit hole of counterintelligence and intelligence and espionage and cold war and hot war and guerrilla war and information war but uh, when you start looking down these these lines of inquiry and you start looking at the the actual DARPA requests for proposal and other high-tech corporation you know the kind of things that they're asking other companies to do for them you begin to see the reality of the level of technology that is being created and this cre created technology is being used for warfare and warfare uh, against what enemy you know we are creating a class of enemy we need to create an enemy class in order to have this this dialectic uh, you know we create a problem and we offer you this horrendous solution that you wouldn't have taken if we didn't create the problem in the first place and you take the solution and we get our way kind of government of the richest and most powerful and uh, I, I know it's very difficult to believe some of the insane sounding stories that I tell and that other targets tell but the truth of the matter is that any good counterintelligence program is designed to make the target look insane you know or untrusted or unworthy untrustworthy uh, criminal or whatever they can do to tarnish the name of the of the target I mean it's it's standard intelligence operating procedure so the fact that the news is not covering this does not mean that it doesn't exist if I can google it and get five million results you know uh, on chemtrails and I can get hundreds of thousands of videos of people saying look what's happening you know why is it so hard to believe that this is a reality this is the 21st century and you know I have undergone these experiences I'm watching myself deteriorate and die from 
the murderous nanotechnology experimentation that's been done on me and the remote neural connection you know the mind control like let's let's wake up to reality here folks uh, some people say that 20% of the population needs to know what's really going on in order to make a difference but I think that we are looking at something so systemic and so world changing you know new world order changing that that I, I really don't know what the dynamics here are going to be. This is information warfare. This is individualized group, you know, information control, tracking, exchange, and warfare. So, uh, you know, to, to disbelieve the, the messenger um, because it... it reacts strongly against your programming see we've been programmed to disbelieve these truths we've been programmed to disbelieve what's right in front of our eyes and you know most people don't even realize that every commercial that comes on television has uh, a theme that is the same no matter what company is advertising, no matter what product they're advertising. And these themes are, are various and they include several things such as death, uh, fear of death, and skulls worship of death, sex of course, which is uh, the sublimated urge that drives everybody to consumption, and um, also there's other things, modern uh, agenda, you know, if you can find the subliminal text, the underlying text in the neuro-linguistic programming, in the wording of the commercial, and also in the symbolism of the action and the juxtaposition of characters, then you will begin to get a grasp that there is an agenda to make everybody anxious, to make everybody afraid, and to make everybody have a difficult time making decisions. Uh, they're pushing, pushing people towards rebellion, revenge, anger, warfare, um, and, and things like this, Dis disharmony. We're not being taught to love one another and help one another, we're being taught to fear one another and, and individually you know, separate from one another, when in fact what we need is to all hold hands, to all look into one another's eyes and say, you know what? Even though we're very different, you and I are just the same. And work out our differences and celebrate our, our, our similarities. Hell, celebrate our differences and work together to build a world that, that we want. Not the world that the, the elite, powerful, rich, evil, inhuman, corporate, imperialist government is is pursuing because uh, I, I have glimpsed that world I have glimpsed into the future and this is not a place that you want to go I swear to you by all that is sacred this is not a place that you want to go no matter how how glamorous uh, Madison Avenue <laughs> sells you the image of, of postmodern transhumanist post-apocalyptic you know world Who's going to live through the apocalypse, you know? Who are the victims, the millions of victims of, of transgenic nanotechnological uh, infection? We are, you know? So, this is why I say, think very carefully about the stuff that you disbelieve, and also about the stuff that you do believe, you know? And uh, look deeply into one another's eyes and try to find the truth. Thank you for listening.